All right, today we're going to look at implicit differentiation. And before we get into what implicit differentiation is, um, we're going to work it the way we've been working it, which uh, technically is explicitly. All right, so if I ask you to take the derivative of this one right now, um, that's what I've got going on here to the left, <clears throat> I'd help you take the function and you'd solve it for y. That's what happens here in the first step. And then you would, um, taking the derivative of both sides so that it stays equal, the derivative of y <coughs> is dy dx, or y prime, same thing. And then to take the derivative of this side, you can see they're using the power rule, bringing the power down, lower the power by one, and they've got the chain rule built into it there. Um, and then with some algebra, we could rewrite it, <coughs> and then we have our derivative. So remember, y prime is the same thing as dy dx. And for this question, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way, um, but sometimes it's easier to do it implicitly, and sometimes you only can do it implicitly. All right, so let's look at the same question, and let's look at how we would do it implicitly. So instead of solving this for y, although I can solve it for y still, that later. Um, what we can do is we can just take the derivative of each piece individually. So I can take the derivative of this term and then the derivative of this term and then the derivative of this term. Now that works out mostly how you would expect except that there is a chain rule piece in here that you may not think of. So like when we take the derivative of this <coughs> I can bring the power down, lower the power by one. The problem is x is my variable and this one is y, right? So I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x and I must have that there because I don't know that the rate of change of y is one. So this is similar to the chain rule and why it needs to be there. Okay, then I can take the derivative of x squared, which would be 2x. And technically, even when you take the derivative of um, x squared to get 2x, you're taking the derivative of x with respect to x. It's just that if dx over dx, this is like multiplying by one, and multiplying by one doesn't do anything, and that's why we haven't had to keep up with that in the past. Because in the past, x has been our variable, and we've been taking the derivative with respect to it, um, so we don't need to keep up with the times one. But when you take the derivative of y with respect to x, oops, take the derivative of y with respect to x, you have to have that dy dx. Okay, so since this is like one, um, two x times one is still two x. And then you can see we subtract the two x over, we divide both sides by, uh, 3y squared and not only would it have been bad for me to forget that but if I didn't have this dy dx then I'm not solving for the derivative I would have nowhere in there to solve for it so it looks like the derivative is negative 2x over 3y squared sometimes you need to get this all in terms of x so sometimes you need to say wait if this was y was let me go down here and plug it in Okay, so that's just a different way to find that one's derivative. Um, I mean, you could do it the uh, explicitly way in this case, and you may think that's easier, and that's fine. Uh, but you'll see that there's some times where that's not going to really work out for us, and we want to do it this way. All right, so let's look at an example that's not all typed up for us. All right, so let's say we wanted to take the derivative of this. All right, well. We're going to do the derivative of each term separately. So the derivative of 2x, I could do the power rule. And I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x. So even though I don't really have to write that, I'm going to write it um, today. Because I want you to see that it is consistent. Then to take the derivative of 5x, that would be 5. And I took the derivative of x with respect to x. To take the derivative of negative 4y squared, power rule, 
And in this case, I took the derivative of y with respect to x, because x is my independent variable. Okay, so these I could do without, because they're really just a one. This one, super important. It would be wrong if I didn't put that. The derivative of 3y would be 3. And again, I took the derivative of y with respect to x, so I must have that. The derivative of the constant is 0. The derivative of the constant is 0. Okay, so since dx over dx, anything divided by itself is 1, um, you just think of these as multiplying by 1. You know, not a big deal. So I've got 2x plus 5 minus 8y dy dx, or y prime, is the same thing, and plus 3 dy dx, or plus 3y prime. And the whole purpose of this is I'm trying to solve for the derivative, so I'm trying to figure out what y prime is equal to. So I can subtract the 2x and the 5 over. Subtract 2x, subtract 5. Okay. And just for convenience, I'm going to write those out, erase those. Um, and then both of these have a y prime, so I can factor that GCF out and get to this. And then finally, if what I'm solving for is being multiplied by all of this, I can undo multiply with divide. So in the end, looks like the derivative is negative 2x minus 5 over negative 8y plus 3. Um, now, if I could reasonably have, have solved this for y, then there's a good chance I would need to plug that in for this y uh, to get it to match up with the multiple choice answer. But I'm not going to be able to easily solve that for y, so that's how we would stop on that one. Okay, so again, really the only thing that's kind of different here is anytime we took the derivative of a y, we need a dy dx. Derivative of y, we need a dy dx. And that dy dx is what we end up solving for in the end. Okay, so let's do that again. <coughs> on number three, x squared is 2x, and I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x. The derivative of xy, we're going to have to use the product rule. So I could take the derivative of x with y left alone plus the derivative of y which would be 1 but then dy dx times the first one left alone over here 3y squared would be 6y dy dx and the derivative of the constant is 0 Okay. Um, so I guess in here, technically, I took the, the derivative of x with respect to x. All right, but we really don't need to keep up with these. Um, dx over dx is like 1. So that's. I think it's maybe a good habit to do for a couple days, but not something that you need to always do. And then in the end, we're trying to solve for y prime, so we got to solve this equation for dy dx. So the calculus piece is really over. Um, just again, I'm going to highlight on this part of the product rule. I took the derivative of y with respect to x. The derivative of y was just 1, but I still need that y prime. And over here, I took the derivative of 3y squared, which would be 6y. But then because of the chain rule, I need a dy dx. So that's really the only new piece that I'm squeezing in here. Um, the rest we're going to solve with algebra. So. We can distribute the y, or the 5, and I'm going to write this as y prime. Again, they're interchangeable. It just it looks a little bit nicer if you just say y prime. Anything that is uh, not a, has a y prime, I'm going to subtract over to the other side. So subtract the 2x over and subtract over a negative 5y. And then if both of these have a y prime, we can factor it out. And then what I'm solving for is being multiplied by all of that. So let's divide both sides by all of that. Okay, so I would stop here. 
Um, if it's a multiple choice question and your answer didn't look like that, it could be that you have to go up to the original problem and solve this for y, which isn't reasonable here, um, which is why I'm not doing it. But if I solve that for y, then I can plug it in for these y's and then maybe it would match up with the multiple choice question you had. Okay, I'm going to do two more as examples and then I'm going to pause and I want you to try the last one before uh, I go over it. <coughs> All right, so to take the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared and I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x and then 3y would be 3y squared but I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x and the derivative of the constant is 0. dx over dx is really like a 1 so that doesn't matter so much. Subtract over your 3x squared to look like that, and divide both sides by uh, 3x, 3y squared to get that. And of course, 3 over 3 reduces. So this looks okay. Um, this one also doesn't look too bad to solve for y, so let's go ahead and do that on this question place of y, we could say y is the cube root of 8 minus x cubed. So cube root of 8 minus x cubed. So you could write it like this, or you could write it like this. Anytime that it's reasonable to do, you probably should practice it um, in case it looks like that is a multiple choice question. All right, one more before you give it a shot. All right, so the derivative of y would just be 1, but I need the dy dx because y is not my independent variable here. Minus 3 times the derivative of x squared y. Okay, well this is the derivative of something times something, so we have to apply the product rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of x squared leave y alone and then I'm going to take the derivative of y and leave x alone okay so this time I took the derivative of x so dx dx this time I took the derivative of y so dy dy and the derivative of cosine is negative sine okay dx over dx is like 1, so I don't really need to keep up with that. And um, I guess for consistency, if I'm using y prime here, probably should use y prime here. Times thing by 1 doesn't change anything. So it looks like I've got a negative 3 to distribute. like so. So I don't know. I guess I could go ahead and finish solving this for y prime, but this particular question says um, at the point 0, 1. So if I was to plug in 0 for x and 1 for y and 0 for x again and 0 for x again I get something that looks like this. And so it looks like I get y prime minus 0 minus 0 equals the negative sine of 0. And at 0, sine is 0. So it looks like at that point it's 0. So um, if you tried to graph that thing, so you might have to use a computer to graph that, that um, problem. But if you graphed it and you went to that one point, I could tell you that the slope at that instant would be zero. At that instant, it would have a horizontal tangent line. All right, so now it's time for you to try. So go ahead and please pause, try question number seven, and see how you do in solving for dy dx. All right, so let's see. Here, you should have gotten an 8x, and if you want to write dx over dx, you can. And here, you should have gotten 18y and you have to keep up with the dy dx because um, we don't know that the rate of change of y is 1 so this is our way to keep up with the rate of change 
and the derivative of the constant is zero. So that got you to 8x minus 18y dy dx equals zero. And you subtracted over your 8x and you divided both sides by negative 18y. <clears throat> which gave you uh, negative 8x over negative 18y. And we can reduce that. So first of all, uh, negative over negative is positive. Also, uh, 2 goes into 8 and into 9. So I would say the rate of change there is 4x over 9y. This one doesn't look too hard to solve for y, so you could do that and plug it in for y, um, but that there should be just fine. So implicit differentiation, it allows us to not have to solve for y. So again, on the first example up here, it's not so hard to solve for y, so it's not a big deal. But if you look at example two, uh, trying to solve this for y when you've got multiple y's in there, would be very difficult and completely unnecessary. So as long as we're careful that when we take the derivatives, when we take the derivative of y and x is our variable, we put in a dy dx, and then that is what we ultimately solve for, then you've got down uh, implicit differentiation now.